Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In today's class we are going to learn in details about materials in manufacturing, which will include detailed discussion about metals, ceramics, polymers and composites. We are studying introduction and overview of manufacturing. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Most engineering materials can be classified into one of three basic categories. Metals, ceramics, and polymers. Their chemistries are different, their mechanical and physical properties are different, and these differences affect the manufacturing processes that can be used to produce products from them. In addition to the three basic categories, there are composites, which are non-homogeneous mixtures of the other three basic types rather than a unique category. This class will provide a survey of these materials. In next few chapters of our Manufacturing Processes course, we will cover the four material types in more detail. Metals Metals used in manufacturing are usually alloys, which are composed of two or more elements, with at least one being a metallic element. Metals and alloys can be divided into two basic groups, ferrous and non-ferrous. Ferrous metals Ferrous metals are based on iron, the group includes steel and cast iron. These metals constitute the most important group commercially, more than three-fourths of the metal tonnage throughout the world. Pure iron has limited commercial use, but when alloyed with carbon, iron has more uses and greater commercial value than any other metal. Alloys of iron and carbon form steel and cast iron. Steel can be defined as an iron-carbon alloy containing 0.02% to 2.11% carbon. It is the most important category within the ferrous metal group. Its composition often includes other alloying elements as well, such as manganese, chromium, nickel, and molybdenum, to enhance the properties of the metal. Applications of steel include construction, bridges, I-beams, and nails, transportation, trucks, rails, and rolling stock for railroads, and consumer products, automobiles and appliances. Cast iron is an alloy of iron and carbon, 2% to 4%, used in casting, primarily sand casting. Silicon is also present in the alloy, in amounts from 0.5% to 3%, and other elements are often added also, to obtain desirable properties in the cast part. Cast iron is available in several different forms, of which grey cast iron is the most common. Its applications include blocks and heads for internal combustion engines. Non-ferrous metals Non-ferrous metals include the other metallic elements and their alloys. In almost all cases, the alloys are more important commercially than the pure metals. The non-ferrous metals include the pure metals and alloys of aluminum, copper, gold, magnesium, nickel silver, tin, titanium, zinc, and other metals. Ceramics A ceramic is defined as a compound containing metallic, or semi-metallic, and non-metallic elements. Typical non-metallic elements are oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. Ceramics include a variety of traditional and modern materials. Traditional ceramics, some of which have been used for thousands of years, include clay, which is abundantly available consisting of fine particles of hydrous aluminum silicates and other minerals used in making brick, tile, and pottery. Silica, which is the basis for nearly all glass products, and alumina and silicon carbide, which are two abrasive materials used in grinding. Modern ceramics include some of the preceding materials, such as alumina, whose properties are enhanced in various ways through modern processing methods. Newer ceramics include Carbides, the metal carbides such as tungsten carbide and titanium carbide, which are widely used as cutting tool materials, and nitrides, the metal and semi-metal nitrides such as titanium nitride and boron nitride, used as cutting tools and grinding abrasives. For processing purposes, ceramics can be divided into crystalline ceramics and glasses. Different methods of manufacturing are required for the two types. Crystalline ceramics are formed in various ways from powders and then fired, 
heated to a temperature below the melting point to achieve bonding between the powders. The glass ceramics, namely, glass, can be melted and cast, and then formed in processes such as traditional glass blowing. Polymers A polymer is a compound formed of repeating structural units called mers, whose atoms share electrons to form very large molecules. Polymers usually consist of carbon plus one or more other elements such as hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. Polymers are divided into three categories. Thermoplastic polymers, thermosetting polymers, and elastomers. Thermoplastic polymers can be subjected to multiple heating and cooling cycles without substantially altering the molecular structure of the polymer. Common thermoplastics include polyethylene, polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, and nylon. Thermosetting polymers chemically transform, cure, into a rigid structure upon cooling from a heated plastic condition, hence the name thermosetting. Members of this type include phenolics, amino resins, and epoxies. Although the name thermosetting is used, some of these polymers cure by mechanisms other than heating. Elastomers are polymers that exhibit significant elastic behavior, hence the name elastomer. They include natural rubber, neoprene, silicone, and polyurethane. Composites Composites do not really constitute a separate category of materials, they are mixtures of the other three types. A composite is a material consisting of two or more phases that are processed separately and then bonded together to achieve properties superior to those of its constituents. The term phase refers to a homogeneous mass of material, such as an aggregation of grains of identical unit cell structure in a solid metal. The usual structure of a composite consists of particles or fibers of one phase mixed in a second phase, called the matrix. Composites are found in nature, for example, wood, and they can be produced synthetically. The synthesized type is of greater interest here, and it includes glass fibers in a polymer matrix such as fiber-reinforced plastic, polymer fibers of one type in a matrix of a second polymer, such as an epoxy Kevlar composite, and ceramic in a metal matrix, such as a tungsten carbide in a cobalt binder to form a cemented carbide cutting tool. Properties of a composite depend on its components, the physical shapes of the components, and the way they are combined to form the final material. Some composites combine high strength with light weight and are suited to applications such as aircraft components, car bodies, boat hulls, tennis rackets, and fishing rods. Other composites are strong, hard, and capable of maintaining these properties at elevated temperatures, for example, cemented carbide cutting tools. So, we have studied in details about materials in manufacturing which included detailed discussion about metals, ceramics, polymers and composites. Thank you.